Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sewing Thursday. I am, of course, T, and you might know me from my sewing blog, Sewing by T, or my fabric shop, Simply by T, or maybe you just really like sewing and you stumbled upon my videos. No matter what, if you like sewing, you are in the right place. I have got a really great um, plan for us tonight. So as people are hopping on, make sure that you say hello and like this video because that helps Facebook know that people really do want to see it. And I will go ahead and get started. So if you are a member of our Facebook group, the Simply by T Fabrics group, you already know that Sinclair Fabrics is giving away a $20 gift card to Simply by T, and that will be on this Saturday. So I wanted to focus a little bit on their patterns. So three of the four hacks that I'm doing today are Sinclair patterns. Welcome, Chris Schoen. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Thank you for joining me. Um, and so, oh, sorry, I got a little bit winded. Welcome, Shalini. Welcome, Michelle and Kaima. Um, I have got some really cool stuff planned. So I want to apologize for the lighting. Unfortunately, you know, with daylight savings, we now have more light in our kitchen space. So next week, I'm probably going to have to find someplace else to shoot our video. Uh, welcome, Marsha. Yes, I am feeling so, so much better. That virus really kicked my butt, but I am feeling much better now. So... Ah, welcome, Henry. Try not to say anything too crazy. <laughs> so let me go ahead and get started with my outfit for, or really it's just my shirt that I'm talking about today. So this is a Sinclair Patterns Shelby, and it is a loose fitting, well, it's fitted to the bust and then loose fitting and kind of flared the rest of the way down. And I've really been looking for lots of patterns that were gonna fit maternity without me having to make adjustments. So I'm actually going to move my chair out of the way. I've got this nice little stand because I need you to be able to see what the hem does. So give me just a second here. I'm just gonna step back, push this chair out of the way. I made zero adjustments to this pattern, not to height, not to width, nothing. It is a straight, Petite US 10, and that is what I am so excited about, about Sinclair patterns, is they include petite sizing. So this is the dress from the front. Well, actually, it's not a dress, it's a tunic. And as you can see, there's my baby, who I'm measuring four weeks ahead with. So yeah, I'm a lot bigger than expected. And you can see, this is the side seam here, so it is starting to pull a little bit, but I've still got lots of room with the stretchiness of this fabric. So this is supposed to be tunic length, and if I wasn't pregnant, it would be tunic length. But since I am pregnant, the front rises up, and that's what I wanna show you here. So the actual hem for this would be here. I'm gonna show you that. So technically, I'm still within tunic length, but like my crotch is right there. So once this baby gets a little bit bigger, <laughs> it's gonna no longer be a tunic. And I knew I wanted to still be able to wear this with leggings. So I added just some of our balloon lace to the bottom. But yeah, so if you look, the tunic length would sit here underneath my butt. So it's a true tunic length, even in the petite, but it works perfectly um. for pregnancy. Um, so let me go ahead and respond here to Kaima because I saw her making comments, but I couldn't read when I was that far away. Um, so Kaima is saying that she tried her first Sinclair pattern and she was really impressed with the drafting. And I really am too. So, and the cool thing is that they've got an Easter sale going on and I've got eight patterns in my cart and I'm trying to narrow it down to not own all the patterns all the time. <laughs> so... I'm still trying to decide, but if you are on the fence, definitely go take a look at the Sienna because it's free and then go ahead and, you know, pick one because I know you're not going to be disappointed. Um, Kaima asked about the fabric. This is actually a rayon spandex from our shop. I'm a little bit obsessed with the purples right now, and so I was glad that I had this one to play with. Um, thank you, Marsha. The lace detail was a really easy fix. Anytime you have 
a shirt or a dress that's just a little bit too short. If you put some lace on it, all of a sudden it looks really fancy. <laughs> um, and you know, when I look at this, I feel like I'm in my pajamas. So super awesome. All right. So yes, Kaima is also mentioning that there is a coupon at the end of the Sienna pattern. So you're getting a free pattern and a coupon for another pattern at a discount. And then they're also doing a buy more, save more sale. So up to $29.99, I think you save $10. And then up to $39.99, you save $15. And then $49.99, you save $20 off your whole cart. So it really is a great deal. So I have plans to show you hacks for this. But first, I'm going to show you something a lot easier. Okay, so we're going to do the first hack. It's really simple and fast. And then I'll walk you through how to do the other ones. So my pattern hack, and it almost doesn't even feel like a hack, is these little baby moto leggings. So you don't have to make them in baby size. But it's a lot easier for me to show you baby size patterns than it is to show you adult size patterns that wouldn't fit on the whole screen. So this is from Made for Mermaids Bonnie Leggings. And you're probably thinking, well, there's no moto on the Bonnie Leggings. I'm going to show this to you and you're going to say, wow, that's crazy easy. So I've got my size one half Bonnie Leggings. This part, the first part, is the hardest part, but it's not hard. So what you need to do is figure out the halfway point between the front and the back. And you're going to want to make sure that you line it up with the green line. Okay? Easy peasy. That is this green line right there. All right? You're going to cut on that line. Okay? And then you will have a back pattern piece. The section beyond this red, all I've done is add seam allowance. Completely not complicated. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut this really fast so I can show you what to do next. It helps if your pattern includes a shorty's cut line. And a shorty is like a bike length just above the knee and a capri length. So this would have been our back pattern piece. I added seam allowance. That's it for the back pattern piece. So this is done. Now what you have left is this right here. This is your shorties line. This is your capris line. Now, like I said, I use the Bonnie leggings because these two lines are already marked. You don't have to, this can go onto adult size leggings. So all you have to do is you're gonna cut on the shorties line, cut on the capri line. Because shorties go above the knee, capris go below. Now you have these three pieces. All you need to do is add seam allowances. And this is your moto knee right there. So it is really that easy. So I've got the three pieces that I made. Everything beyond the green are my seam allowances. Here is the knee part. The knee part will have one, two, three seam allowances added. The side seam and then the two connecting seams and then the lower leg okay so i know that lots of pattern companies have moto legging patterns and moto pants patterns out right now but if you have a pair of pants that you like <laughs> all you need to know is where that pants stop above your knee where the capri line is below your knee and then put in your seam allowances. Now I will say that I have been completely cheating on motos and using Simply by T quilted knit fabric. And this makes it really simple and easy because all you have to do is cut out the pattern piece. But if you are going to be making or quilting up your own moto, definitely quilt the piece first cut the pattern piece out second because when you quilt the fabric, 
And by quilting, I mean you're sewing the two pieces of fabric together to get those lines. It's going to shrink. And it might not seem noticeable, but you can lose a lot depending on how many lines you put in and the type of stitch you use. So that is it. You can turn any pants into motos, but the quilted knit makes it like super fast. So I've done a bunch of these for our new baby that's coming. And I don't know how effective they'll be at keeping babies from running holes into the knees of their pants as they're learning to crawl, but they are super cute. And you're not limited to, you know, kid size body leggings. You can do it on any pair of pants. All right, so now we get to the fun part. I'm going to show you all of the back hacks. So New Horizons just came out with a new fitted tank and it's called the Marbella. And when I saw it, the first thing I said was, I need that. And then I took a really deep breath and I asked myself, do I really need this or is this something that I can hack on my own? And the reason, the one thing that stopped me from buying it is that New Horizons drafts for someone that's 5'5 five, five to 5'6. Five to and that meant I was going to have to do a lot of length adjustments. But let's just say that, you know, the length adjustments weren't, weren't the problem. Well, New Horizons also drafts for someone with a B to C sewing cup. And I'm not a B to C sewing cup, so now I have to deal with a full bust adjustment. And then the Marbella does not come with a maternity hack. So I was going to have to hack that too. And by the time I got to all that, I was like, oh my God, do I really want a new pattern? When what I really wanted was all the cute back hacks, right? So I decided I love the Sinclair Shelby. The fit is perfect. I don't have to play with anything. Why don't I just hack that? So I'm actually going to be using this little tiny dowel size pattern to show you how to make these adjustments. But I want to show them to you first because they're really fun. So, like I said, these are all Sinclair Shelby's. I call this a peekaboo back. You've got the same galoon lace and then the little peekaboo right there in between. Okay. Then you've got the V back, which comes to a V. And the one that I don't have a sample of for you is the racer back. And that shirt fell on the floor. We'll worry about that later. So I didn't finish my racer back, but I can show you how to hack it. And these are so, so easy once you know what to do. So it took me a long time looking at the pattern piece going, I'm not sure where all these things are supposed to go. So the first thing you're going to need to do, you're going to take your half pattern piece and you are going to cut it off from right at the armhole notch. And you're just going to cut a straight line across, make sure that you line it up here on the edge so that you cut straight across. And so you would end up with something, uh, let's see if we can get the lighting down a little bit. There we go. Okay, so it's going to look something like this, and there's your line cut across. To make any of these hacks, you're going to need a full back pattern piece, okay? So this is the hardest part, is making sure that you have this all straight and lined up because you're working with a much bigger piece than this little tiny piece right here. I'm going to show you the peekaboo back first. Get that focused. There we go. Okay, so this is the peekaboo back. You're going to notice I have a dashed line right here. And then I've drawn a line from right around here on the neckline across here. And this section right here is where it's going to peek through. Okay. Now, the reason you need this dashed line right here is because depending on how long or how wide your lace is, you only have so much space between here and here and between this point and this point. 
So for example, on mine, I used a six inch lace. That means that this from here to this line must be less than six inches. Now, if you're in a larger pattern size and that number is bigger than six inches, well, that just tells you that you need a lace that's bigger than six inches. We do carry six inch and eight and a half inch lace. I would think that for most people, the eight and a half should cover what you need covered. So um, again, here, the distance from here to this line must be less than the width of your lace fabric. And how much you peekaboo right here depends firstly on how much width you have here on your lace fabric and then just how much peekaboo you want. You do want up here at the neckline for it to overlap. So you're gonna notice this is the pattern piece, this is all the stuff that would get cut out. And you want at least a half inch here to overlap so that when you bring your um, neckband in, it has something to connect to. You don't wanna leave that open. And that is it for the peekaboo back. So the only thing you have to keep in mind is this dashed line from here to your edge has to be less than the width of your lace fabric. Your pretty lace edge goes here. And you'll notice, let me grab my shirt, that I just bound the armhole, just like if I was using it with a regular piece of fabric. So I didn't do anything fancy there. You need to add, oh, let's get that focused. You need to add seam allowances here on your lace pattern piece and up here on your lower back pattern piece so that you have a means of connecting those two. But that's it for that one. So that is super, super easy. All right, so now we're gonna do the V-back version, which is this one. And you'll notice that instead I wrapped my binding along this edge because it doesn't go all the way over. So, there we go. So instead of cutting this section out, to get your V up here on the top, you're gonna connect this outer corner and you're gonna create an overlap on the bottom. Again, just about half an inch. Now, if you have enough space from your half inch overlap to your side seam, you may be able to include the armhole. I did not have quite enough with six inch. So six inch took me to like here. So all I did was drew a straight line from here to wherever six inches is from here and created my pattern piece. Again, you add seam allowances right here. This is your lace edge, and you'll have to finish whatever edge is left over right here. But this is just the inverse of this one. So with this one, your pattern piece is, uh, hold on, your pattern piece is this side. And for this one, your pattern piece is the smaller section with the peekaboo up here. All right, the hardest one, and this isn't hard, okay, so stay with me here, is the racer back. The racer back actually doesn't need the full pattern piece. You can draft it on a half. The information you need is you need to know how skinny your shoulder blades are. So how much space do you have in between your shoulder blades? And I think when Kevin measured me, it was like three and a quarter, three and a half inches. I don't know. I had to measure me. And then I knew that I wanted to, it to sit in between. So I took some space off. So I had this line approximately from my back neckline to where my shoulder blades were. And I measured the width out and created a point right here. I picked a number somewhere <laughs> um, for the width of this lower piece. And I created a line to that part. And then I created a line from this outer corner to that point that is skinny enough to go between my shoulder blades. Your lace edges will be here and here. 
and you need a seam allowance here because you're going to cut two of these and you need a seam allowance that goes from this pattern piece up and from this pattern piece down so you'll see right here it says add seam allowance and then you'll need a seam allowance right here on the bottom to attach it to the lower back so like i said this one is the most complicated it helps if you have someone who can measure your back because this height right here is kind of a, I don't want to call it tricky because it's not tricky, but it helps if someone can measure for you. Otherwise, you're kind of guessing, but even if you guess, you're probably going to get pretty darn close. I estimated that mine was about halfway on my neckline and that turned out to be the right spot. So you, with this, with the racer back, you're going to end up with two pattern pieces and you're going to cut two of each to get your racer back. Now, there's one last thing I want to show you about how I finished the lower edge. And I have to be honest, basically, I took the ideas from the Made for Mermaids Mama Bridget and just brought them over onto a new pattern and then used the idea to get the pattern pieces. So on the back, I finished them two different ways, and I'll tell you which way I ended up preferring. So this one, all I did was fold down the hem. And I had a feeling I was going to hate it, and I kind of do. Because that doesn't give this section right here any stability to pull in a little bit tighter and make sure that it stays on your body. And it just doesn't finish as nicely. That said, it totally works to just hem it. And all I did was added a seam allowance and then hemmed it over and I didn't do anything extra over here. But the way that I actually like and feel like it looks better is by adding a band. Let's see if I can get close enough for you to see. Yeah, you can just see the band right here. So I used this band instead across the entire back. Now it's able to add a little bit of tension so that it holds a little bit tighter on my body. So it's not it's not complicated, but I just felt like that was a better finish to put the band on that section than to just hem it. But honestly, that's it. So you can, you know, the hardest part, like I said, is making this full pattern piece so that you can make the hacks. And I will, of course, take nice photos of these and put them up. I think after the video is done, I'm allowed to add photos, and if not, I'll like make a blog post or something and share them over. But adding these little things, you can, like I said, I am in love with the Sinclair Shelby, but I plan on buying the Jolie so that I get an even tighter fit on the back. And you can do this to any pattern that is a tank and has the back already met, like designed for you. So I know that was a lot of information. Who needs me to repeat anything or has questions? Because I want to make sure that I'm answering questions. <sighs> Plus, I just like talked a lot. <laughs> make sure that Facebook is showing me comments. So does anybody have any questions about doing the moto needs? Because I felt like that was like almost a cheater hack. Well, you're very welcome, Shalini. Like I said, I was very tempted to buy a new pattern. And if you don't have a tank, a fitted tank, and you fit into New Horizons block, then absolutely go buy the pattern because it's gonna save you a few minutes of hacking time and you need a fitted tank anyway. But I am at a point in my pregnancy where I don't have a lot of time for making a lot of adjustments. So the fact that the Sinclair patterns are fitting me so well makes it really easy for me to just say, I'm not buying another pattern, I'm just gonna make what I have work. So, just wanna show you these backs again. And I mean, I wish there was some way for me to like change and show them to you, but that involves me turning my back and it's... Yes, Becca, I will explain the band in just a second. So this is the peekaboo, and you'll see there's just a little bit of crossover right here so that I have a place to put the band. All right, so Becca asked me to explain the band. So let me show you where these, the band goes. So 
I've got this one, pattern piece. And because I'm cutting it from this to this, I'm going to end up with the whole rest of the body underneath that part. And so I added a seam allowance, and then I put the band across here. And I hate that this doesn't show well. I mean, it's really pretty, but let's see if I can, here on the side might work better. So this is actually the side of the back, and you can see the lace coming up here. And all I did was added a band to that area so that the finish was just a little bit nicer. Lori is asking how I decided on length. So I actually went by feel on this. Um, I did quite a bit more stretching in the actual armhole. Once I got to the side and started coming across, I just kind of added just enough tension that it's going to hold it together without causing it to start to actually pull the fabric. And that's one of those things that you kind of learn from experience is how much tension you can put on the band before it actually creates too much tension and starts to gather. But this has just a little bit. And if you look, because here's the side seam, you'll see how this section is just a little bit thinner than where I stitch it together. And that's how you can decide how much tension is enough. Um, if you've ever put on a neckband without a measurement and just kind of did it by feel, it's that same feel that you're looking for. Um, when you're feeling along a curved edge, you're going to notice you have to pull more to get the right feel, but across a straight line, it's easier. And I don't have a better way of explaining it. But if you are not sure, you can do half the measurement of, let's see, of the armhole, because there's an armhole pattern piece. You'll need the straight line for the V-back to cover this section right here. And then I'd probably do like 90% of the back width for that section. So it's a lot of adding little numbers together, but I think 90% will get you pretty close to having it tight enough. Welcome, Mara. Um, you are going to want to make sure that you go back and watch because I showed you how to hack the back of the Sinclair Shelby. So this is the V back line. And of course, you can get galoon lace in our shop. And then here is the peekaboo. So you can certainly do that also. And then um, I showed how to do the racer back, but I haven't finished my racer back. So that I will probably get finished tonight, and I can get a photo of it to add into the group. So I might just make a complete post in the group, including the pattern hack pieces, which obviously this is not the Sinclair Shelby. This is actually the same pattern piece. It's a free doll t-shirt pattern, but it's just exactly what I needed to show all these pattern pieces. So Lori, do you feel like I answered your question? I, I feel like it was a little bit of a convoluted answer. So if you feel like that wasn't quite the information you needed, um, you can always feel free to message me. Um, Becca, do you feel like the band was explained? It, it really is, it's no different than a neck band. I just made it a lot longer. To fit my pattern pieces, um, I think I cut it 48 inches long, um, and I ended up with some leftover. So that'll give you an idea. Um, this animal print is available in the shop. Um, and I am definitely an animal print lover, so there are lots of different types of animal prints. But this is a rayon spandex, so it drapes amazing. And then this is our cobalt cotton lycra, which I actually don't recommend using cotton lycra for the Shelby, or at least not our cotton lycra. It doesn't hang really well, and it's not super awesome. I mean, it's going to be great to sleep in, but it's not the amazingness of rayon spandex. All right, I'm glad that I was able to answer that for you, Becca. So like I said, I'm going to put up a post in the Simply by T Facebook group. It'll have how to make these hacks 
so that you have it in front of you. You can look at those photos and know exactly where the lines go. Um, if you have questions about how to make it work, I'm absolutely happy to help. And otherwise, we have hit the 30 minute mark, which I thought we might with all the pattern hacks that I had planned. Um, quick bits of shop news. Uh, Sinclair Patterns is having their 5K member giveaway and Simply by T, I believe, is offering a $20 gift card. So make sure that you join their group so that you can register for a chance to win. Our day is Saturday. Five out of four, I think, is celebrating 20 or 25,000 members. I don't know. A lot. And we're also giving away a gift card over there. So make sure that you're a member of five out of four and that you keep an eye out for the chance to register for that gift card. And, uh, yes. Okay, so I know I promised earlier this week that I would get the pre-orders up, and I didn't. But I'm going to work on that tonight. So they will be up for tomorrow morning so you can start pre-ordering your um, swim fabric and your athletic fabric. They will be at pre-order pricing and um, approximate date that they should arrive in the shop is April 20th. So that still gives you lots of time to sew before you should be needing your swimwear. Um, and certainly here in Wyoming, I mean, it snowed this morning. So <laughs> you never really know if we're ever gonna get summer. All right, so thank you everybody for joining me. Like I said, I'm gonna work on getting this up. Oh, pink. Lori wants to know what colors, so let me take a look, because I hadn't quite had a chance to look at the finals. I know that we will have black, and black is very important to me anyway. I mean, if you guys don't want to order black, I can sew it all by myself. Let's see, final color selection. And responses. <sighs> Just waiting for it to load. Okay. So we've got black. This is for the dry text athletic fabric. No, come back. Ugh, it's loading. Okay, so we've got black graphite, which I'm guessing is a really dark gray. Royal, which is probably close to this cobalt turquoise, and then a tie of purple and navy. So I'll probably load all six. So we didn't get pink for swimwear, or for the dry text. For swim, we've got black, true blue, plum, which is surprising. I didn't expect that one. Navy, one, two, three, Four. And then a multi-part tie for purple, Hawaii, which is a really pretty blue. Um, a tell green. Wait, hold on. No, it should be the 12s. Okay, hold on. Plum is a yes. True blue and black. Navy. And then a tie for four different colors, three different colors. Um, and transit, which I don't know what that is, tell green. Yeah, so I'm going to have to take a look and decide how many we're going to end up ordering. Um, so the thing about our pre-orders is I have to get at least 10 yards ordered of each color. So if you're like, well, my color didn't get picked, but I want to buy a lot. If you're gonna order 10 yards, 10 continuous yards of a color, please message me because I will make sure that that gets ordered because obviously that's a value to you. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna get those up either late tonight or before the newsletter goes out tomorrow morning. So that should go together pretty quickly. Robin, I'm glad that you got the colors you wanted. Lori, I am a little bit sad that there's no pink. So I might pick a pink anyway because I like to have pink available too. So thank you everybody for joining me. I know it was a lot of me talking this time and not as much of interaction. That's kind of how pattern hacks go. I have to do all of the talking. Ooh, sorry, my nose is getting itchy. Anyway, thank you for joining me. It was fun as always, and I can't wait to see you next week.